Hey guys, how's it going today? My name is P0 and I wanted to bring you a really cool video on this specific CRT TV right here. This is the Apex AT-2002 and I already previously made uh, a video on this a little bit. So whenever I was talking about all sorts of different CRTs and whatnot, like around here, uh, I had mentioned about this Apex and how I liked it, but I never made a video on it. So that's what I was going to do. Uh, I also made a video yesterday specifically on this TV, um, but I didn't really like it. I Energy was kind of low, all that sort of stuff, and I ran into a little bit of issues, and I'll get into it. Basically, it was issues with the remote. Uh, so I always get remotes, specifically OEM ones, for TVs like these, just in case I ever give them away or sell them to anybody else. Remote comes with it, and on top of that too, there will be some TVs that you need the service menu, uh, or the only way to access the service menu is through the remote. So, I had a little bit of an issue with this, and I'll get into it in just a little bit here. But let me go ahead and turn on this TV, show you how it looks, and we'll get into it. Alright, so I just turned on the TV, got 240p test suite running. Uh, as I mentioned before, I use 240p test suite on my Super Nintendo up here. I have it wired through either composite, S-Video, or even RGB, depending on what monitor I use. Now, uh, this particular TV comes with composite, and it is mono audio only, which is a little bit weird. As you can see, I have the hookup there for stereo and the mono, and there is two ports. So there's... They're wired into the same port, basically whichever one you're using is whichever one it's going to prioritize. And you can see back here too, this is where it shows the model number, the manufacturing date, and everything like that. Now, Apex TVs are known for being pretty cheap, honestly. They are a Chinese brand. Uh, people have kind of had a stigma about this TV brand in particular. Like, there's a couple weird ones where it's just like, you know, maybe you might want to just avoid them because they might be just too cheap or not well known enough. And they'll tell you to go get something else. Well, I decided, let me go get an Apex specifically for the purpose of giving it a try, just giving it a try. I mean, I saw this for free on Facebook Marketplace. I said, you know what? Let's go for it. Turn it on. I was pretty impressed. Um, as you can see, and let me go ahead and get my test patterns up just give me one sec all right there we go so i just got it set uh, on the tripod just to show you so let's go to the grid pattern and i'll show you kind of what's going on with this tv so as you can see geometry is actually very well set uh this tv as i got it looks pretty good um not very much convergence is issues either uh the only thing is like around here is just down on the bottom right corner. Honestly, it's not that bad, but that's pretty much the only convergence issue that I can personally see. And I did try fixing it. I did go inside the tube uh, itself, redid the convergence, just to try and get it to be a little bit better. And it turned out all right. I also readjusted focus and just played around with some of the settings and it was pretty fun. But overall, the tube is in really good condition. Uh, it's really nice. And one thing that I found out about this Apex CRT is that it actually uses some quality components in it. So this one in particular has a Panasonic tube. And that kind of blew my mind. I was like, you know, you'd think for a Chinese TV that's pretty cheap and has mono audio for some reason made in 2002 uh, and with a look like this, it should be pretty bad. But it's actually really good. And this set can handle that uh, Panasonic tube really well. And I'll get a little bit of a close-up here in just a little bit to show you what I mean. But one thing that I did in the previous video that I made about this uh, CRT, not the one that I just posted, but the one before this video that I deleted, um, was I actually adjusted the colors and I went into the service menu using this remote. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get into the service menu with this because it's pretty neat. It's actually surprisingly easy TV to work with. Um, it's also RGB moddable from what I can tell. So for anybody who wants an RGB moddable set for ridiculously cheap and or free, I mean, this is a go-to, no problem. But one of the things that happened in the previous video was when I got my remote here, uh, I bought this off eBay. It was like $8 or whatever. It said tested working. Well, it didn't work. <laughs> and I took apart the remote and I found out why. And in here, the battery terminals on the top here 
were broken. Uh, not specifically the terminals themselves, but the solder joints that actually broke on the remote. So I had to take apart the remote, take the PCB, repair it, put it back together. Now it's fine. But anyways, let me go ahead and get the service menu up and I'll show you kind of how to do it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to turn your volume all the way down to zero. After you do that, you're going to want to hold the video button on your uh, Apex TV and you want to hold the mute button on your remote. So there you go. You hold it down until it pops up like this. And right here, this shows you your uh, service calibrations. And I'll get into a different screen to kind of show you it better. So, as you can see here, uh, right now it shows V position. Now it says slash 50H. I'm thinking that means 50 hertz. And typically 50 hertz is associated with PAL. Now, PAL, if you don't know, is a video standard used in Europe and a few other places. Uh, here in America, we use NTSC for the most part, especially where I am. Uh, and same with Japan. So they have two different video standards, and typically with PAL, they ran at 50 hertz, where we ran at 60. So don't get scared about this, because there is the 60H adjustments here, which is what we're going to focus on. So as you can see here, we have V position. Uh, I don't know what this is exactly. V size, uh, V, I think, S correction or something like that. V linearity. And a couple other things, you also have sub right, sub contrast, a few other things. But the one thing you also have is control over all three colors for both uh, drive and cutoff or bias. And this is really good. And this actually came in handy because I had to adjust the red on this because there is a thing called red push, which is pretty well known in NTSC, like American TVs and stuff, which makes the screen really warm. And there are some sets where you can actually turn that feature off uh, and it will set the red back to normal. But there are some cheap TVs like this one in particular, which use a little bit of a gimmick, which instead of having its own red push setup, it just increases the drive and the cutoff or the gain for red. And what will happen is it oversaturates the white, makes it to look super warm. And you, like, if there's no color temp changing or anything like that, you have to adjust it by changing the bias and the drive. It's not the best way to do it, but it's the way I, that I do it. And it works. So I was going to show in my previous video me adjusting it a little bit. I've already done the adjustments because of the previous video, so now I don't have to do that. But all I did was essentially turn down this bias. And you can do so. So you, count, you uh, use the remote here to go up and down for your different adjustments and then you go left and right to make those adjustments so that's what i did so i cranked it down a little bit so i'm gonna leave it at 55 because that's what it was set to but that's kind of how it went so i had to do that for the colors but other than that it's pretty good so you get a few other options here that you don't really need to mess with and other than that it's pretty good but I did want to ask it uh, for anybody who does have an Apex TV like this and who knows about these specific 50H adjustments. Does anybody know if this TV can support PAL in particular? Now, I know for the most part, almost every single TV in North America that is NTSC does not support PAL. Uh, you really only get that with video monitors. But considering it has the adjustments here, I'm pretty curious to see if this one in particular can at least support it or if it's only for maybe PAL-made versions of these TVs where they kept the same service menu adjustments. It's just, it's in there. Because if you change these adjustments, it doesn't do anything. It only does it for 60 hertz. Uh, obviously, this TV's running at 60 hertz, so... It's not a definite, but it's pretty interesting to me. But anyways, that's kind of how it is. Uh, also, a really funny quirk that I forgot to mention. So, as I, as I showed with the video input that it's composite with mono audio... It's actually not, it's mono, but it's really weird. It's actually, it's like a fake stereo um, because there is two speakers. So there was one on the left and one on the right, and they are both wired into the same audio input. Now, obviously you're not getting true stereo sound, but it does mean that you do have two speakers playing off uh, your mono input. Of course, for anything stereo like my Super Nintendo, you do need a adapter, and I'll show you here in a little bit. So this here is the adapter that I'm talking about specifically. It's a dual uh, RCA going into a single channel. And for Super Nintendo, because uh, for the most part it runs off stereo, 
you have to do this to get the full sound. Now, what's interesting is because this is mono, but it has two speakers here, this is actually a benefit for people who use the Sega Genesis Model 1. <laughs> and for those who know what I'm talking about, and for those who don't know, um, the Sega Genesis Model 1, the AV port on the back only outputs mono audio. And the only way to get stereo audio out of it is to use the headphone jack in the front. And you have to convert that headphone jack, which is 3.5 mil, to RCA, and then run those two RCA cables to the back to get stereo. Well, with the, just the AV port with mono, you can just plug it in here, and guess what? You, you have two speakers, I guess. So <laughs> it works out in the end. So you could say Apex TVs were made for Sega Genesis Model 1s. Um, but anyways, enough of that. So... Also, if you want to get out of the service menu here, all you have to do is hit the power button on either the TV or the remote, and it saves your settings. So just do that right now and see if it works. Okay, I turned the TV off too while I was at it, but oh well. So let's go back into video here. So that's pretty much all there is to it about this TV. Um, it is really good in terms of its picture as well. So as I get in closer here, you can see there's a pretty prominent scanline effect for this TV. And it is a 20-inch, only running composite, as as I mentioned before. Um, it's surprisingly good. I am actually pretty impressed by the look of this TV. And here, I'll go to this setting right here to show you the scroll test. So, it looks pretty good. But rather than show you just patterns and scroll tests and stuff, let me go ahead and put an actual game up on there and show you how it looks. So, this here, for those who might be able to hear the audio, is Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy Kong's Quest. So, overall, I really like the screen. Uh, I really like just how it looks in general. For those who are looking for a really good experience, you're definitely going to get one with this TV. Oh. I'm pretty bad at the game. <laughs> but yeah, so... It's pretty interesting to see that a TV like this, which doesn't have very, like, good rep, you could say, is actually a pretty good uh, TV. Like, there's not too much to go off of it to say negative-wise on the TV itself. So I'm impressed. Uh, for those who are also impressed, I suggest you pick up one of these TVs, whether you're going to RGB mod it, or whether you're just going to want a nice experience with this set. So, that's pretty much all to it. Um, yeah, there's not much else to say. <laughs> uh, if you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. Tell me if you have one of these TVs, or if you've seen any Apexes around in your area for free. Um, don't be afraid to pick one up. I know some of these sets have some really good tubes in them. I've talked to another guy who said his Apex flat uh, CRT had a Toshiba tube in it. And I've seen a couple other Apexes with Toshiba tubes as well, uh, just in documentation and whatnot. There's specifically one that has this microfilter tube that's extremely good. Uh, I think it's the PF3220, if I'm not mistaken, and there's a couple other variants of it. So if you see one, don't hesitate to pick it up and try it out for yourself. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here, let me go ahead and actually show you a close-up of kind of how this looks, too. Just for one last time. So, unpause that. But, yeah, overall, it's really good. So, thank you so much for watching this video. And, yeah, this is just the video on the Apex AT 2002. <laughs>